All right, welcome back. So I was, uh, you're probably wondering where we've been for the last, how long has it been? Has it been like a month, a month since we were least. here cutting? Yeah. Uh, where have you been? Uh, gosh, I, uh, I'm a very lucky person. I got to go to Peru where I did a mountain running race through the Andes. A short race, if a I recall, right? It was right? Uh, 80 kilometers, about 50 miles. They went over a little, about 53. And this is in the mountains? Yeah, we reached 16,000 feet elevation uh, about three times during so the race. So why would you run that for? Was there somewhere you were going, or did you need to pick something up, or...? Uh, <laughs> I know you're not making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, uh, but no, it really was just a huge challenge, and it was a great way for me to uh, make my lungs strong, you know, to run at high elevation between 11 and 16,000 feet for roughly a week uh, on end. I, the, the race was only two of those Were days. you running at 16,000 feet? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine. when I Remember when I moved to Colorado? Yeah. Uh, we were at, my apartment was at 10,000 feet. And I was, when I pulled up there from, you know, from Oregon, um, I had to stop like on the landing carrying my luggage and sit down because I couldn't even breathe. I can't even <laughs> imagine go, going from here and running at 60, I mean, that's a whole nother world up there when you it, get above 14,000 feet. It, it was, we, but it's, you know, it took us about uh, a day, day and a half to get to about uh, 11,000 feet. And that was a, a town, the town of Juarez, about 100,000 people. And uh, from there, we just kept going higher and higher over the course of a week. So we took our time acclimatizing, you know, not pushing the pace too hard. But by the end of the week, we were ready to do this race. And uh, it was 53 miles, like I said, split over two days up in the most beautiful scenery you'd ever, I'd ever seen. Now, how many folks uh, started the race and how many uh, completed it? Uh, so they had the whole weekend of races. There were probably 200 people, 200 people racing. Uh, some did the full 80K, some did shorter distances, 45, 35, even 13K. Uh, so uh, that was, again, only a couple hundred people. In my race specifically, I think 50 of us did it. and. Uh, I want to say 40 probably finished uh, and a friend and I we tag teamed it we stayed together the whole time and kept each other's spirits up and we we did great we finished ninth place so it was well it's really interesting is we, we weren't able to be there but you uh, you were kind of you were Instagramming and, and sharing kind of the whole experience and then you kind of wrote that article uh, or the letter to your friends and family that kind of summed up the whole thing and and that really made an impression upon me because we've talked before about I think both of us have had some regret about not going into the military when we were younger. And I think for me, and I think probably the same for you, is you kind of wanted to, to know how you stack up against other men. You know, can I, could, could I hack it? I always kind of, if I had the chance to go back, I would like to try to go out for a, you know, maybe a SEAL team or special forces mm -hmm. or something. You kind of um, had a moment in that race where you had, you could have easily bailed out when t things got really, really tough that probably pushed you more than ever before what was that how was that and how did you push through it and then get through that time when everyone's telling you you should quit I heard those words uh, directly from people around me you know it's okay you don't have to finish and I for the first time in my life I actually started to agree with it to start to think you know this isn't super fun it's can I'm, you set the can you set the the, the, the situation where, yeah. where, where we're at well and it's, it's nighttime correct freezing cold it had begun raining in the afternoon, so night came on earlier than I would have hoped. Um, and should we re rewind a little bit and actually set the scene if this was actually in the Alps? Yeah. So, you know, I was lucky enough to actually go do a second race after my Peru training. Uh, the Peru tra trained me to run at high elevation very well, and then within a couple weeks, I found myself in Europe running around Mont Blanc. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to do 100 kilometers. That's uh, not the pen. Yeah, <laughs> it's just as beautiful. Yeah, uh, but uh, it's an inspiration for the fans. It's, it's right. exactly that. Yep, uh, we saw the store, but uh, so here I am uh, now in a new setting um, with 2,100 other people running 100 kilometers around Mont Blanc from uh, a small town in Italy through Switzerland into France to Chamonix. That's the finish line where thousands of people have spent this week preparing for and, and or you know run this is their biggest run of their lives mm -hmm. to be in these uh the the ultra trail du mont blanc and so for me i'm doing the 100 kilometer version uh it it started out a beautiful day and that's and, how many miles for us non-metric people uh, for, sorry it's about 63 miles 63 miles 63 miles in the mountains and the other number that's kind of cool is uh we ran 
uphill 21,000 feet, a little under that, 20,000 feet, and we had to run down 20,000 feet to a vertical. So that, that was the real challenge there. The 63, if it were flat, wouldn't have been too bad after the training I've done. But uh, here I am facing these huge mountains, the weather's perfect, and then it went completely south. Right, as it does it, in those elevations. Very quickly, yeah. yep. Clouds rolled in, it started raining, got soaked through. Uh, when you go take a break, grab some food, and you basically you don't, don't have any support. I mean, you have to be very tactical with this, try to anticipate what, do I, what am I going to need? And you can't carry a whole bunch of kit I mean, because you're running. So you have to try to determine what's, what am I going to wear? What am I going to need? And did you make good choices for that? Well, this particular set of races over there, the Europeans are very strict. They want to make sure we're all going to be okay. So they require you to pack a certain amount of gear in your pack. You do, okay. I followed it to a T. I might have added a couple little things that I've personally enjoyed using, you know, throughout my own training for the last four years. Uh, I used every single piece of equipment they told us to bring. I ended up wearing every bit of clothing and then some because I did meet my wife throughout the race. She was able to get to the course in one point and she handed me yet another layer of wool. So I ended up wearing two layers of wool, a full waterproof jacket, hat, gloves. I mean, I was so just so you're running. Down. You're running at night. Yeah. You're running in, and the whole trail is icing up. You can't see anything. It's got to be treacherous. Yeah. And so it, when it just gets to the, to the worst, when the weather's turned super bad, you're coming into a tent, right? Correct. Or kind of warming area. Yeah. And, and your wife is there. Yeah. And you have to make the decision to go back out. You're probably in a blanket and, and you know, I saw the pictures. You're all warm and <laughs> getting some warm drinks. You have to make the decision to go back out into that hell storm. Yeah. And that was very trying, especially when other people around me, even my wife was saying, you know, it's okay if you don't finish. And to hear it from my biggest fan, it starts to make you think, oh, maybe it is okay to quit. And, uh, and your fellow competitors oh, are, are, are deciding not to go back out. Yeah, over 500 of the 2,000 people quit yeah. and uh, decided not to go on. So, you know, I, I, the thing that hit me was I've been training for four years doing this. This whole season, this year, running in Peru for a week, uh, you know, I, I've trained so many hours, so many miles, so many vertical feet. I, six more hours, I can do this. Right. I mean, you know, that's all it is. It's another six more hours. Well, heck, it might have started around another eight more hours, <laughs> and then it reduced. It's only six more. Now it's only four more. Now it, and just every step of the way, you know, I just figured, you know, I'm going to get warm if I leave this tent and start running again. Uh, granted, I'm using a headlamp. Um, you can barely see in front of you. Icy, slippery. The rain's coming down. Yeah. Actually, the, the course became a mudslide. It may, became a luge run. So. I have, um, I, I've never been in an endurance race like that before, but I, I've always found it very interesting on what it, what is it in a guy's mind that it gives him the, the ability to push through when it hurts that bad. And when you read through and you, and you read interviews of guys that have maybe been through like the BUDS training or been through Hell Week, the thing, there's a common thing that comes through is they don't look at the big picture. They said the guys that wash out and the guys that give up, they become overwhelmed by the scope of enormity, the enormous task ahead of them and it, it destroys their, their ability to carry on. And the guys that get through it, like, you know what, I, I need to get through, I need to take this one step. Mm -hmm. Or I've even gotten to the point where, I don't know that I've been through anything that extreme, but I have been, you know, 20, 20 days on a wildland deployment you know, 16 hour days where you're so tired and you're so beat down and you just like, I just don't know how I'm going to get through this, this 16 hour day. And it's a little benchmark. It's like, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get to this point. And then you start making these little goals and, and you start breaking it up into bite sized pieces. And it's the only way to get through it. I would imagine the same thing happened to you. If you were to look at the whole thing, the six hours, it would have been very discouraging. There were three more mountains in front of me. Each of one of them was 2,500 feet up and 2,500 feet down over I don't know how many miles, I forget that now, uh, each step, each one of these three, it's like a three humped camel. I was like, oh my goodness, this is what is coming in front of me. And I'm only halfway through. I, so that, that was very daunting and absolutely one step at a time. I'm gonna run up and over one mountain, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna slow it down a little. I'm gonna just think about how I'm breathing with every step and how do I stay warm and it, it, it worked. It all added up just yeah. like you described. Would you do it again? I'm thinking that my goals might change a little. Uh, maybe I'll run races that are during uh, the daytime 
you know, when you're running at night, you're not getting to me the added benefit of being out there, being able to see this gorgeous right. scenery. Right. And so you've traveled the, halfway a world, half a world away to see. Exactly. Yeah. And I got to see that for only about half a day, a little more, and then it just went uh, to cloud and to darkness, and that was the rest of the run for me. So that that was a little less uh, enjoyable than I I'd hoped to have. In other races, I've certainly succeeded in having more scenery. So I'm gonna I'm gonna aim for something like that. Well, it was, it was very impressive. And, and I don't know, do you have a public um, social that where you share in that story or was that just for family and friends? Uh, you know, so far it's only been family and friends, um, but I have uh, no problem sharing it with anyone who wants to, to, to read it. So okay. uh, maybe we can set that up. Yeah, yeah. So all what I'll do is, is if Eric wants to share that, I'll put it in a link in the bottom of the video. I, I really invite you to uh, to uh, go read that. It's a very, it was very inspiring to me and we were very proud of you. And maybe you can send some pictures or you have any pictures of that? Abs yeah, no, pictures are part of the story and uh, yeah. I'm just totally flattered that people actually wanted to follow and, and, and it felt so good to share it with others. I mean, uh, it's not just for me that I'm doing this. I, I really, I certainly enjoy it for myself, but when I can share it with others and then they have questions and, and comments, I, to me, that's so enjoyable. So yeah. I love that. It is, it's encouraging. Definitely encourages you to get up off the couch and start moving. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna cut some wood here. That will probably be a second video, but uh, thanks for watching. And um, go down there and check out Eric's story. It's very inspiring. Thanks.